Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, we've been getting messages as far as uh, three messages exactly about the same thing, uh, wanting us to talk about certain jeans that we actually don't even have in our collection. Um, we responded to those messages, don't really know how any of our in expertise, because we're not experts at it, um, would really help or benefit you know someone making a decision on jeans that we don't have. But um, it led to having conversation which dove a little deeper into mocking up potential projects. Now that is something we can talk a little bit about. So we're going to dig in now. Hey guys, what's going on? Will here, Flawless Exotic Creations, coming to you guys with another video today, and um, it's completely swamped. So I'm gonna jump right in. Um, by the way, if you guys are in the Atlanta area, please come by and say hello to us this weekend. We would be doing, we are vending the Southeastern Reptile Expo. Uh, Bob show in Georgia, it's the biggest show, biggest reptile show in Georgia. Uh, as of right now and we will be vending it uh on the flawless crested gecko side of things but still it's all under the same flawless umbrella so please come by say hello take some pictures you know talk us up we love to engage and we love to socialize so it's going to be a amazing event um but this video as it pertains to Stemming from questions we received, um, we're going to talk a little bit about mocking up potential projects. Um, in the past, I got me a little checklist because Audra's not here. Um, you know, when talking about certain genes, we talk a lot about genes, which every breeder uh, or potential breeder, aspiring breeder should talk about the genes that they're working um, because you're putting out into the atmosphere. Um, hopefully spark an interest into some of the projects that, you know, you may end up having available um, as well as you're pushing, you know, the issue of continuing on to a uh, next gen project for yourself. That being said, you know, we've been working with LC, uh, LC Black Magic, which came, you know, from KG and D over at Brown Projects. Definitely a hot, hot, hot gene to kind of get into. Um, we're working with Grimm. Grimm, um, some things have been done with Grimm, um, and we're still super stoked and super excited. Hetari is another gene we're working with. Um, very, very beautiful, very, very granity gene, and we love it so far. Tragic, very new, very hot on the market, very pricey at the moment. Um, we're working with that as well. So in hope, and hoping to better the situation for someone looking to get in, um, the common questions and issues always arise. Oh, you know, hey, people have been breeding, you know, ball pythons for 20 plus years, 30 years. And you're accurate. Um, the interesting part about ball pythons, though, is there's so many genes and so many morphs. Some of them may be the same. We get that. But there's still clearly 300 morphs out there easy and i'm probably you know undershooting it quite a bit um you can kind of find whatever fits your your fancy and kind of run with it um that being said that's the whole gist of this video here um we want to spin it off and talk about a gene where hey we don't have a collection and we're new and we're getting education you know we're getting educated on these topics and we want to get into breeding um it don't always have to be at a big big breeder scale but i want to create something interesting and that keeps me excited into the hobby so a couple of genes we're going to talk about today um just two uh it's going to be smoke and scrambler so both of the genes are extremely untapped. Uh, you have more people working Scrambler um, than Smoke. Smoke is going to be uh, another granite gene and complete dominant gene with a super form. And I love it. Um, but I th I'm taking the opportunity now to kind of talk about it because we don't have any of it. Uh, we kind of passed up on that. Um, and we'll talk about it in, in you know other videos as they come down the pipe on kind of picking and choosing your programs and projects. But 
Smoke is an awesome jean. I really, really love that jean and it's extremely untapped and it's kind of readily available by certain breeders. Um, and it's not very expensive. Um, you can actually buy super forms and they're not very expensive either. So if you're looking to get into a jean and, and trying to get your feet wet and figure out what you can do with it, I, if I were you, would start and you like dark granite jeans, I would start with smoke. Um, secondly, I would go with Scrambler. Scrambler is going to be a little bit more pricier. Um, it's becoming more uh, readily available because there's more people finding it in their collections. So you're going to have more in uh, more interesting combos involving Scrambler uh, starting to be released and starting to be worked. I really like Scrambler as well. I don't really consider it a dark jean. I'm more on a maybe color neutral to lighter um, jean. It's definitely a pattern altering jean, but those two jeans is what we want to kind of mock up. And I want to keep it simple. I don't want to dig and dive and, you know, kind of go all down the scientific realm. I want to kind of keep it, you know, very, very simple uh, for the common, you know, person. So, what direction would you go with those two genes? So if you're going to go, and I'm gonna to try to be non-biased, um, here at Flawless, we tend to work uh, a lot of our incomplete dominant genes into multi-recessive genes. That's just the direction that we go in, but you don't have to. So with those particular genes, there's a few different um, lanes you can go down, about three different lanes you can go down. You can take Smoke or Scrambler, um, and go down the incomplete dominant route and make some cool combos that have not been made yet. Um, you, where I would start always, you, and, and which is kind of how a lot of these other genes came about, start with your, you know, old faithfuls is what we call them. Um, your yellow bellies, your, um, your, your bell complex uh, genes, meaning, you know, you, your Mojave's and stuff like that, where, Typically, it's extremely easy to identify a Mojave. So if you have a Mojave and you can do this also with untapped, you know, unproven genes. A lot of breeders do that with these genes, these dinker genes that they have. They breed it to a single gene Mojave. And when you produce your clutches and they come out of the egg and they're not looking quite like how Mojave should look, they know they kind of have something and they just kind of work it a little deeper. Um, you can see that with certain interactions with certain combos. GHI Mojave uh, has a very distinct look about that two gene combo snake. So I would work Smoke or Scrambler, uh, work them with Mojave, um, see what you get out of that. Also, you know, you want to brighten up, you know, smoke work with orange stream, you know, see how it works when you throw Inchi in it, when you can kind of, uh, Inchi is going to work, it's going to work heavily the pattern but also it's going to have a color change on any combo that it's involved in so those are two genes that you kind of can throw on your uh, chalkboard and and start from and you can always go incomplete dominant you can go to bananas or coral glow you can go um, your traditional routes of uh, you can add those genes into your GHI Mojave since you know generally how a GHI Mojave should look. Now you're adding a third gene in there. Um, then let's go a little further. Take one of those genes and you want to go recessive. Personal opinion um, for for us, we wouldn't go just single gene uh, recessive at this point, but that's just us. It's a personal preference. Um, is there a market for a single gene? Yes, there is. Uh, there's a market for single gene. There's a market for non-recessive animals that are just multi and complete dominant genes. Uh, there's a lane for anything you want to do still 30 plus years into ball pythons being here in the United States. Um, so you can go, I took notes. You can go, I would say ultra male, you know, or Monarch, whatever team you're on, you know, we're team ultra male. I think that's very, uh, a good lane to go down. If you had smoke or scrambler and you want to take it to a recessive because they've held their value. Um, ultra male is still booming and Monarch, you know, whether I want to admit it or not, I think it's because it's 
very scarce, not readily available everywhere. Um, it's tending to go for more um, monetarily, uh, monetary value uh, than Ultramel. So either one of those routes you go for a single gene recessive, I think you're gonna win with Smoke and Scrambler. Now, the lane that we would go down in that situation is gonna be a multi-recessive. So that's gonna be two um, recessive genes or more, depending on the budget. And we would pretty much go down again. And I know my man Darren over at Sloan Morris is gonna jab and stab at me on this. But sitting back and observing the community, the industry, the hobby, online, the, everything, the route I would go with Scrambler or Smoke would honestly be for multi-recessive Ultramel Cryptic. So I would go to Ultramel Cryptic route. Uh, again, fresh coming into the, into the industry with, you know, no collection behind us, no focal point. That will be the focal point. So you're looking at getting, you know, Ultramel or getting a, a couple ultra male getting a couple cryptic combos uh males and females but also i would double back and go get probably two super smokes um and add them into that program grow everything up and start working those projects um same thing with scrambler i haven't seen the super scrambler form yet therefore i would get um two males and two females that um, our scrambler combos to start into that project as well as diving into the cryptic side and ultra male side um, to kind of advance that project forward it's not something that you're gonna literally make incredible combos overnight or one season away it's something that you're gonna have to fine tune add things on as you move forward uh hold a bunch of things back because what you're going to pre be producing right out the gate is not going to be readily available this is the lane that we talk about in a lot of our videos here it would be 2024 you're getting in you know and the prices are awesome you're finding these amazing deals and it could be 2026 and you're creating things that's not on the market already um so all we're doing is trying to urge uh the newer people like ourselves to don't doom the hobby don't don't you know tell everyone oh you know ball pythons is dead we don't believe so um i think there's plenty of life in it you know every market goes through a correction uh we did some research and ball pythons have went through it actually several times and they're still here and they're still booming and they're still gonna be here um people do go through life experiences where it has nothing to do with the industry but they just can't withstand their lifestyle uh you got to remember ball pythons and keeping them and breeding them for a lot of people are a hobby so if you go through financial uh hardships one of the first things that's gonna kind of go is gonna be a hobby something that you have true enjoyment of but you just can't kind of afford it at that um particular time some people kind of fend off uh, the bills and everything else um, temporarily and can make a comeback and that's awesome but some people can't so sometimes some of the breeders getting out of the industry um, that's that's why but it is what it is want to keep this video uh, really really on track and really really upbeat there's plenty of life in the industry plenty of life in the hobby you got to focus on what your passion is and chase it but if you're coming in and you kind of don't know where to start that's a couple of spots where I would probably take a really, really focused look at. Anyways, Will, Flawless is out of creations, and we out.